Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. Good morning and welcome you all to this next lecture on the uh, inorganic chemistry of life perspectives principles. Uh, in the previous class we have been looking at a few aspects I will bring recapitulation of those. One of that is we looked at absorption of elements by intestine and this we have looked at uh, as an example for the iron case. Then later on we also looked at uh, the inter element absorptions will have interactions either antagonistically or synergistically. So, antagonistically is that when the concentration of one of the element goes up the concentration of the other element would get hampered. Synergistic is exactly reverse to this where the absorption of one of the element will favor the absorption of the other element as well this is all we have seen. Further we have looked at another aspect how these metal ions are bound in, in biological systems in particular to proteins. In that we have looked at it is the side chains of the amino acids and we have looked at there are certain side chains like carboxylic, like amine, like thiol function such as aspartic, glutamic, histidine, cysteine, serine, uh, uh, threonine all these kinds of amino acids having side chain ligating centers which are capable of binding to the metal center. I have also talked to you there are some special uh, you know factors like heme. Heme is nothing but the porphyrin containing iron center. So, this entire heme is again embedded to the protein. So, therefore, the metal ions are directly connected to the side chains of the amino acids of the protein or they are present in heme like systems or porphyrin like systems and porphyrin like systems can also have additionally coordinated to the protein where fifth and sixth coordinations are still available because the heme provides only four coordination and most of the transition metal ions particularly the iron, nickel this kind of cobalt ions can extend their coordinations to 5 and 6 as well. So, therefore, if the metal ions are bound either to the amino acid side chains or to special compartment or a combination of these and this is what we have learned in the previous class. Now, let us uh, look at the same with uh, the example being given over here. So, this is uh, a protein. Uh, uh, is which is nothing but I, which I explained to you called transferrin. A transferrin as I said earlier transports the iron ions across the blood okay, from one organ to the body uh, to the other organ uh, via the blood. Now, you see that. So, you have an iron center and iron center is covered by the protein and if you expand this region you could see the whole thing here. So, what are you able to see? You have a metal ion center which is iron which is connected to this uh, which is the phenolic oxygen another phenolic oxygen. So, where does the phenolic oxygen come uh, in kind of a uh, amino acid such as it is the tyrosine. So, the tyrosine gives you the phenolic, uh, uh, phenol, phenolic group and the phenolic group upon deprotonation becomes phenolate and this phenolate will bind over there. So, you have two of them are tyrosine uh, groups tyrosine, tyrosinates and then one of them is nothing but the, uh, uh, the nitrogen of the imidazole moiety which is coming from the histidine. So, therefore, it is a histidine binding. The fourth one is a oxygen or the carboxylic it is a C O and there is another O and this is coming from the aspartic. So, you could see here there are three different types of amino acid residues totally four such residues a binding to give a four coordinated spaces and we know in cases of iron with the four coordinated they are, they are uh, very likely to be of the, uh, the tetrahedral type, but I will come to the geometry aspects bit later stage. 
So, you can see therefore, the iron ion in enzyme like uh, transferrin has a coordination sphere and if you take this uh, uh, just this portion alone it is a primary coordination. So, it is like an iron is suspended into protein in the form of a complex where the ligands or the side chains are the uh, protein. I hope you understand this. So, to make your understanding uh, further better I will show you one more example. This is an example of an enzyme where we have a plastocyanin. So, right now you do not need to worry what this enzyme is, what its function is, though its function is electron transfer. It has two types of metal centers, one is the copper center, other is the zinc center. Okay. So, zinc center, copper center. So, you have a copper center, zinc center. So, these are different subunits, so do not bother about all that. So, if you look at the corresponding uh, case of uh, uh, this particular uh, metal center which is the copper. So, now you can see that the copper is surrounded by 4 ligands, okay. one of it is cysteine, this one is cysteine sulfur and this is cysteine sulfur, but it is not cysteine, it is a modified cysteine. Modified cysteine is SME, so SME is called the methionine. Okay. So, therefore, is a methionine. So, methionine sulfur which is a ether, thioether and then this is a uh, cystinyl sulfur which is S minus. So, this is S minus is SME and then you have uh, uh, a histidine uh, which is you see from the perpendicular view. So, therefore, you are not seeing the total plane. Uh, you can see another histidine here which is you can see the nitrogen. So, in this case there are three types of amino acid residues, one is histidine, other is cysteine, other is uh, methionine. Okay. So, but there are totally four, the four amino acid residues are bound to this. Now, what you can call this as a, this is a coordination complex. Now, and these amino acids are connected to the protein, therefore, it is suspended in a protein. So, therefore, the metal ion copper here is a suspended in protein through the bindings of these. On the other hand, if you come to zinc center, you can see here zinc has got in this particular case the three bindings, uh, two of these are from a carboxylate. You can see it is a carboxylic group, it is a carboxylic group and one of it is the uh, imidazole which is a histidine. There is a tri coordinated uh, zinc center that you have and a tetra coordinated copper center you have. Later on you will learn that the copper center is the uh, actually the one which is reaction center and, uh, and the, uh, the center of the zinc is basically the one which stabilizes the structure. So, stabilizing the structure, so it is not involved in the function. So, therefore, this is structural uh, ion and this is the, the catalytic ion. I will bring this distinction a bit later much more clearer. Right now you can say non-functional zinc a functional copper. So, the copper is involved in the redox uh, process of uh, you know the transferring the electron back and forth. Okay. So, therefore, redox enzymes. Okay. Having seen these two examples, let us have a bit of survey, survey among the large number of proteins of which I have picked up a few which are zinc containing uh, and maybe the iron, maybe the copper. Let us first look at this particular table shows different enzymes based on the zinc. Okay. So, uh, it, it may be useful for you if I take you through this even in a later stage because you can study better in future when you look at uh, the books etcetera. This enzyme name is carboxypeptidase and it has a lot of protein which is not shown here, but what is shown here is a zinc center. Zinc center has in one histidine, another histidine, another aspartic and there is a water. And so, and in this case the aspartic having a carboxylate group it binds like a bidentate. So, therefore, two coordinations from this, one coordination from this histidine, one coordination from this histidine, totally four and one more is the water. So, I will explain you why water is there, what water does everything when we come to this enzyme. Uh, 
uh, thing. So, right now your idea is to see take that in this particular carboxypeptidase the zinc center has got the binding from these different amino acids coming from the protein and forming a 5 coordinated uh, uh, structure over here. And there is another example just below this. This has got not one zinc center, but this has got two zinc centers. You can see that two zinc centers, zinc 1, zinc 2. And similarly, this is also bound by a, a histidine and aspartic, also by histidine, aspartic and there is a bridging ligand. The two metal ions are bridged by another aspartic carboxylate group and there is one more bridging which is coming from the water. Okay. So, therefore, the two metal ions are not separated, but bound together or bridged together by an aspartic and water molecule and each of this is a coordination sphere. Now, that means this di zinc center is suspended in a protein called amine peptidase and it functions. We will see functional aspects at a later stage, may not be for this enzyme, but some, some other enzyme too. Another example you take the enzymes name is carbonic anhydrase. Carbonic anhydrase you have one histidine, another histidine, another histidine and a water. So, there are three histidine residues bound through the nitrogen and the, which is nothing but from the imidazole moiety. So, you know the imidazole moiety is a 5 membered ring having a nitrogen which has a lone pair which will bind to the metal center that is what and then you have one water, role of water etcetera we will be seeing later. So, now what you can see this zinc, this four coordinated zinc is a coordination complex which is suspended in a protein. Then you have another example over here, uh, astacin and thermolysin again zinc having a five coordinated structure here, uh, here as you can see. Uh, and similarly, you have on this side on the top alcohol dehydrogenase, we will be studying more details about this enzyme, uh, about their uh, functional etcetera uh, to much later stage when we come to the story of the zinc enzymes. This has a different kind of, uh, of amino acid residues. What are those residues? You have a cysteine, you have a cysteine. What is cysteine? Cysteine has a CH2SH. In the CH2SH, the proton uh, is last, the S minus. So, it is a thion thiolato. So, it is a thiolato bond, zinc thiolato, zinc with the S cysteine, zinc with the S cysteine and zinc with the histidine. So, there are uh, three amino acid residues, the fourth one is water. Okay. So, therefore, a zinc coordination complex is suspended in enzyme called alcohol dehydrogenase and does its function. So, uh, come to another example, alcohol dehydrogenase also has this is the same example, but it has two metal centers. One metal center I explained to you here, this is a catalytic center that means reaction occurs here. And this is another zinc center which is structural means no, no function occurs at this place, but it is required. It is required because it has to hold a particular kind of a conformation structure. So, you call it as a structural rigidity. So, structural rigidity for the protein is obtained when the zinc this kind of a zinc is present. And what is this zinc? This zinc is bound to four cystinyl things different from the zinc that is here. So, you have a two distinct uh, zinc centers, one is the zinc catalytic center and the zinc structural center both of these are there. Okay. Both are a part of the same protein, but two different centers. So, more details will come when I explain to you the alcohol dehydrogenase, its function etcetera. And there is some proteins called zinc fingers. So, in the zinc fingers you have two histidines and two cysteines. And leucine, there is another example, leucine aminopeptidase, okay. this has got two again two zinc centers and each of these is bonded by the aspartic, aspartic again one histidine, one aspartic and these are bridged by the glutamic and aspartic carboxylates and with one water or hydroxyl species. So, these are the kinds of things. So, what do we, le what do we learn out of this entire table, uh, table of things is that there are variety of zinc enzymes are there. Each of the zinc enzyme has a different function which we are not learned right now, which we will learn in later stage, 
but we know that they have different enzyme uh, different functions, but they have a different coordination sphere. And a common feature is in all the cases zinc ion is suspended in the protein and bonded through amino acid residues, side chains of the amino acid residues and in some cases water molecule. And in some of the cases not one zinc it could be two zinc di zinc center and both the zinc centers may be bonded together or bridged together and this is what we understand from this particular uh, uh, table. It is nothing to uh, special with the zinc proteins. Let us look at a different kind of a proteins, uh, proteins based on the uh, copper. So, let us look at the copper based enzymes. So, again I have given a table of this. So, I will not go as detailed as I have gone in the previous slide, I will go a bit more quickly here. So, what do we have here? There is one protein called plastocyanin, there is another protein called galactose oxidase, there is another protein called azurin, there is another protein called oxyhemocyanin, there is another protein called copper zinc superoxide dismutase and cytochrome c oxidase okay, and blue copper sites which are perturbed. I will explain you at a very later stage what why the meaning of perturbed is coming into, uh, but give you a small hint right now. And then we have other kinds of axially uh, substituted blue copper sites etcetera. In fact, the plastocyanin that is one, the azurin the second and the petrol blue copper sites third and they actually substituted blue copper sites. These are all coming from one particular class of copper enzymes and these particular class of copper enzymes are known as the, uh, the electron transfer blue copper proteins. So, they are blue in color therefore, they are called the blue copper proteins. Okay. So, all of these four have the same function which is electron transfer, but other enzymes have a different function. So, uh, for example, galactose oxidase it will oxidize the galactose primary hydroxyl of the galactose okay. and uh, oxohemocyanin this is involved in transporting the oxygen not in human in molluscus. I will explain la later when we come to the, uh, uh, the story of oxygen transport and uh, the copper zinc superoxide dismutase in this case the superoxide radicals are dismuted O2 minus are dismuted. This also I have already mentioned earlier nothing new, but details will come later on. Uh, and this is a cytochrome C this supports the uh, heme center. Uh, so, therefore, that much we will see at this stage in the electron transfer process. And uh, this again I told you this is electron transfer protein this is also electron transfer protein. So, not what have we uh, studied from all these uh, this entire table. We have variety of copper containing enzymes in each of the case that the bound residues are different, different geometries also are there 4 coordinated 5 coordinated so many things are there and they all do different functions. That means, a copper ions are suspended in corresponding protein bonded through the different residues of the protein and making into a copper enzyme. And if this much information is understood, uh, this much information is assimilated by you for regarding this one as absolutely more than sufficient at this stage regarding the metallo proteins and metallo enzymes. I will show one another table which is uh, which is pertinent to the iron enzymes. So, first of all I have to tell you when it when it comes to the iron enzymes I have to tell you there are two types of iron enzymes there. One is the iron enzymes where iron ions are directly bonded to the side chains of the amino acid residues. The second kinds of iron enzymes where the iron is bonded to, to a unit which I have already introduced to you is called the heme. So, there are the four nitrogens of the porphyrin are bonded to the uh, iron. So, therefore, these are iron nitrogen bonds and this in turn is bonded to the protein. And Remember, there is the pro ion in this hemes has got only four coordination, and the four coordination in more or less in a square planar fashion. So, iron is capable of showing fifth and sixth also. That means six coordination. Therefore, the fifth and the top, sixth and the bottom, these are vacant. So, either both of these 
uh, one of these can be bonded by the uh, side chain residue too. So, therefore, there are a huge range of heme proteins are there. So, the uh, in this case what I am telling you in, the, in case of iron there are two major classes of enzymes. One class of enzyme is called the heme enzymes and the other class of enzymes are called the non heme enzymes. In case of non heme enzymes the uh, iron is directly bonded to the uh, to the amino acid residues ok side chains are the amino acid residues. You can see here rubridoxin and you can see ribonucleotide reductase, you can see acornitase, you can see methane monooxygenase, you, you can see 4 iron 4 sulfur cluster uh, and uh, extra diol dioxygenase and you can see superoxide dismutase so many things. In all these cases many more are there, but I am given only a few selected examples just to give a feel in all these things the iron ion is suspended in the protein and where the ion center is bonded by all these side chains of the amino acid residues. In this case it is a cystinyl, in this case for example, aspartic carboxylate, this is glutamic carboxylate, this is histidine okay? and this is bridging carboc glutamic and these are waters. The role of water we will see at a bit later stage, there is a lot of important uh, uh, issue with the water presence there because they are involved in the catalysis of it or they are involved in uh, allowing the substrate to be bound to this. Okay. So, I have been telling you about the different types of ion enzymes heme and non heme having different residues bonded to that and in case of heme four coordinations are filled by the, uh, uh, the porphyrin and two other coordinations or in one of these coordination is bonded by the protein. When only fifth coordination is bonded by the protein, sixth will have more, most of the times as a water and this can provide uh, a substrate binding as well. So, as I said the water position have got two kinds of roles, one it will be sort of a, a ligand where it can be exchanged by the substrate. The second case is where the water is involved in the uh, reactivity. So, these are two possible ways that we can see. So, what all we have seen till now in the metalloproteins and metalloenzymes, the metalloproteins and metalloenzymes, the metal ion is suspended in the protein not just like that, but it is bonded to the side chains of the amino acid residues or it is bonded to a uh, special group like heme. So, therefore, heme bound uh, things. When the heme is bound there is a possibility the fifth and sixth coordinations can be bonded by the protein or even fifth po po coordination can be bound by the protein and then in such a kind of a thing will basically function. So, now uh, what do we understand from a metalloprotein or metalloenzyme? So, metalloprotein or metalloenzyme is uh, metalloprotein O metalloenzyme is you have a, a protein plus metal ion center which is coordinated to the protein. So, so therefore, one can basically see this as, so the metalloenzyme is it is you have a uh, metal ion complex plus the protein. So, in other words we can say the any of the metalloprotein or metalloenzyme where you have a metal ion bonded to the protein as like a uh, any other coordination complex and this coordination complex is held by the protein. So, what do you think such a kind of a complex uh, can do? Let us at this stage itself let me bring uh, to you a simple uh, case of let us say I have uh, 
an iron salt ok. So, I have uh, iron salt let us say iron uh, 2 plus salt uh, let me put in water. So, therefore, I get uh, FeOH to uh, 6 2 plus complex ok. So, now if I put this ion uh, in the protein ion 2 uh, plus uh, plus protein. So, I will have uh, uh, metalloprotein where the metal center is coordinated to uh, to the protein. There are two things are there. So, one is that uh, uh, direct binding, binding of the protein resulting in a coordination complex. So, this complex is not a, a simple innocent kind of a complex like what you have in water. So, in, in, in water you have just simple iron water aqua complex. In case of the metal of protein the iron 2 plus bonded to the protein and the protein structure and the protein conformation all these will influence the properties of the iron center. Therefore, what I want to convey to you is, is that the, uh, the properties of the iron ion in aqu iron aqua complex is absolutely different from the same iron ion when it is bonded to a protein and when it is bonded to different kinds of proteins. So, therefore, diverse functions diverse properties are possible by the same iron ion, but in different medium. So, therefore, in case of uh, test tube reaction the water is the medium in case of the metal o protein and metal enzyme it is the protein which is the medium. So, therefore, medium played role on the metal center is very influential. So, in one case it is water in the other case it is the protein. So, the protein binds to this and protein alters the functions and protein uh, takes care of the modifying the functions of all of these. So, that is very uh, absolutely interesting. You know why it is interesting? It is interesting because you have seen there are hundreds of different types of uh, metalloproteins and metalloenzymes there, even for iron. If each protein does not change bring such a change then all proteins should have behaved the same way, but they are not true. Each of the enzyme have one different function whether it is a zinc enzyme there are 100 different zinc enzymes are there in fact more than 200 are there and there are several hundreds of iron enzymes are there and several dozens of 200 of copper enzymes are there. In each of this the coordination uh, is different uh, some cases coordination very close by, but the protein is different. So, it is because the protein is different the properties imported to the metal center do differ. So, therefore, protein plays a very important role simple copper aqua solution or copper amine complex and a copper in the protein. So, protein will also have nitrogen ligands. So, therefore, we cannot say that the copper present in a protein will have the same properties of the copper ammonia complex. Similarly, iron, so iron aqua complex, so we should not think the simple iron aqua complex which is present in test tube, its properties are going to be the same as the properties of the iron 2 plus in a protein, it is absolutely different. In each of this protein and enzyme we have a different kinds of uh, properties are there. So, therefore, the proteins modify the properties of the iron or zinc or copper thereby we have uh, a, uh, nature has evolved with a huge number of different kinds of enzymes that is the take home lesson that one should see. And just before we uh, close this particular part of the thing I would like to tell you that these are already I have talked to you that they are bonded and this table will uh, give you that different bindings binding in case of potassium, magnesium, calcium etcetera, manganese, iron 2, iron 3, copper, cobalt, nickel, copper 2, copper 1 all these kinds of things. So, you have a different kinds of the binding and the reasons for this binding I will explain you later which is can be explained based on the stability 
and they also based on the HSAB hard soft acid base concept at a bit later stage. And uh, so, whatever I have talked to you is about there are different essential enzymes you require specific dosage of these per day and they have certain functions. So, different kinds of functions are there for each of these the uh, manganese, vanadium, iron, cobalt, uh, etc. in all these things they have different kinds of functions. Some of them may be showing only the uh, carrier osmotic pressure. I will come to this a little bit more uh, a bit later uh, stage on this. So, to sum up let me tell the following. Uh, so, we have seen that the metal ion is bonded to the uh, side chains or the amino acid residues of the proteins and these amino acid residues of the proteins bound, bind and make a complex. So, therefore, it is like a metal ion complex is suspended in a protein and the properties of such a complex is different from the properties of simple complexes that we see uh, day to day or we see in the test tube because the protein uh, applies its own uh, parameters of uh, 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 the conformation and other hydrophobic hydrophilic properties etc. As a result of that the metal ion center properties are changed dramatically therefore, different enzymes function differently though the coordination sphere may have very close by. Uh, thank you very much.